In just one second, I can take my photo from this to this or even this. That is pretty much how I would edit this photo. But if I put even more time, more effort into editing these photos inside of Luminar, how much better can they get? So I selected some of my favorite photos from the past year to see what's possible in just one second with a few clicks, because then I'm gonna spend an hour, edit all the photos again, compare the results, and see if all that extra effort was worth it. Now, I will admit, I like to keep my edits fairly simple. A few base adjustments, a preset, and then I'm good to post. But Luminar has challenged me in this video to push their software and my photo edits to their limit to see what's possible and how crazy of a result we can get. Hopefully it's not too crazy. This photo of Emerald Lake is one of my favorites that I've captured this year. And if I jump into the preset tab, you can see it's kind of already making me recommendations of what types of presets it thinks will work well on this photo. I'm actually gonna jump down to the easy landscape set because there is one in here called long exposure that I think is exactly how I would edit this photo. But if you find it a little bit too much, you can, with a few extra clicks, kind of roll that back to a point where you feel like it looks good. Luminar also has a bunch of intelligent tools, like their Smart Photo Enhance. So with one slider, I basically drag up the accent, and you can see, if I turn it on and off, it's effectively raising the shadows, bringing down the highlights, bringing everything into a tonal range that is pretty much the types of adjustments that I'd be making anyways. So this is one of my favorite photos I've captured this year. Not just because it's a cool Corvette, but the composition, the lighting, the slow shutter. Now, Luminar again has recommended some presets that it will think work. So I'm gonna go into these big city lights and just see what we've got. So. <laughs> that is probably too much purple for me. I appreciate the thought, but the one I'm interested in is this frosty setting because this is how I would edit this photo, aside from one extra adjustment. Luminar has an entire suite of masking tools, but if you're feeling a little bit lazy like me and you just want it to figure itself out on its own, there is this light depth setting that if you turn it on, it does a depth map analysis. So if I raise the amount, you can see that what it does is effectively provide like a, a beam of light through a specific portion of this image. And if I drag the icon, I can actually move that beam of light to pretend like maybe the sun was shining through to the other side of the car and you didn't have to do any of this masking on your own. The, Luminar figured it out for you. Luminar has made photo editing so accessible that it almost takes no time to learn this software. Like I'm literally using it right now for the second time and it feels like everything just works naturally. Like I can go through these presets, find one I like, adjust the slider and like this photo of this bird is pretty much exactly how I would edit it. It's not perfect, that's what later in the video is for, but it does look really good. But if you know wildlife photography, you know there is one tweak, one trick that you're gonna wanna add to this photo. Now, if you are someone who edits wildlife, you know that sometimes your shutter's cranked, your ISO is cranked, and you've got a little bit of noise in your image. So I'm gonna try this noiseless AI setting, and it's actually recommending this middle option. So I'm gonna click it. It's gonna take a few seconds to do its analysis, but immediately this looks pretty good. There's before, there's after, but if I wanna tweak it, of course, I can drop the denoise. I'll just keep it at 100 for now. If I wanna bring back some of that feather detail, some of that edge sharpness, you've got all your controls right there. Now, some photo editing software makes you pay a monthly subscription or pay extra for AI credits. But with Luminar, everything is included in a one-time price. And right now is the best time to get it because it's actually on sale. So if you're interested, you can check it out in the link in my description. But what I wanna show you is their Gen Erase tool because if you've ever been to a popular photo spot, you know that you get tourists. <laughs> And photoshopping them out is not the easiest thing to do. So with Luminar, brush over the thing, the people, the subject that you want to remove, hit erase, and boom, there's your result. And of course, Luminar has already recommended me these urban style presets. Now, 
The one that I like is this old town vibe because this is literally how I edited this photo in the past. But this Edinburgh one, which is really cool, has like this volumetric fog effect. So you can see as I drag it, it's actually adding like a fog in front of the bridge. This Toronto one is probably a little bit too like moody for me. So I'm going to stick with this New York preset at 100%. One of the advantages of Luminar is that it's also available as a plugin. So if you like all these creative tools and edits, you can get them for Photoshop or other Adobe software. And right now I'm editing on my desktop, but you can also get it for iOS, Android, and your iPhone. One of the tools that I saw earlier that I really wanna try is this magic light. I don't know, it just sounds cool. But if I zoom in to all of the point lights that are on the Golden Gate Bridge, apparently it will make them look more dreamy. So let me see if I can. So it's found the lights. So it added even more starburst, but I think I can turn off the beams. And basically now it's just added glow around the strongest point light sources in my photo. That is. That is pretty cool because normally that would take me a lot longer to do. Another one of my favorite photos from this year, I think I'm gonna try the same preset that I tried earlier, which is this fast fix. But then I wanna jump into another tool under landscape called Twilight Enhancer because this allows you to do something cool. Like we can, you can notice I've already got this like purplish color scheme going on. And if I drag this slider, it effectively adds even more. Or if I decided, oh, I want this to look more gold, I could tweak it. And normally that would require a lot of masking of, of the sky inside of your editing software. But in this case, with one slider and one adjustment, you can pretty much customize this any way you want without having to do like some sort of crazy sky replace, which you can also do. But I do want to try a sky replace on this photo. So let's apply a preset and then jump over to the tools. And so Luminar comes with all of these built-in skies that with one click, you can pretty much just add any sky you want. Like, I don't think I'm going to be adding the Milky Way galaxy to Moraine Lake anytime soon, but it is nice to know that it can do it. And one more because I haven't shown you the auto adjust setting yet, but under the edits tab, if you hit auto adjust, this again is where it's gonna analyze your photo and try to pull out everything. Now, this is a challenging situation because we have a lot of shadows where our subject is and a lot of stuff going on in the highlights. So I think this is a photo where I will need to spend probably a good 10 minutes or longer really pulling out all the details. But I'll throw in a preset just to see what I can get, just to see what Luminar can make of it. But uh, I think it's time to dig deep into some of these edits. After a full day of editing, yes, a full day of editing these photos, let's take a look at how some of these longer photo edits compare. Starting with this raw photo of the Golden Gate Bridge, here's our one click edit and here is our full one hour edit, which really goes to show just how much you can do inside of Luminar without having to go to another software to replace your sky or do all of your relighting or do all of your dodging and burning. Now we're gonna break down some of those individual techniques that I used, but one of the first things I did was create seven of my own custom presets exclusive to Luminar that are available right now inside of their marketplace. So I actually decided to add 10 presets, which is good news if you're thinking about picking these up. There were just too many good ones to not include. Also, if you're watching this in the first week of this video going live, the presets might not be available just quite yet. So make sure to check back or I'll add a link down below where you can put your information in and I'll keep you notified. The idea is that they offer you a starting point or a point of inspiration. If you're not sure what might be possible with your raw files or your JPEGs, you can throw on one of these presets, adjust the sliders, and you have at least some starting points. So you're not just starting from zero, like some of those examples I showed you earlier where it's kind of like a one click and you're 90% of the way there. That is the idea with these presets. And I don't know how long they're gonna be up for, so check them out inside the Luminar Marketplace or using my link down in the description below. This photo of Monument Valley I didn't show earlier because I actually wanted to demo the HDR 
merge tool, which exposure stacks so that you can create a higher dynamic range image. I thought about doing a sky replace, but ultimately ended up keeping it the way it was. But the one thing I did add was another develop tool to manually brighten the road. But if we go back to the photo of the bird, here is our raw, here is our one click edit. And then what I wanted to do was erase some of these distractions in the background because they kind of take away from the bird. But the secret to any wildlife edit is of course that extra bit of dodging and burning that you might wanna do. So I threw on a dodge and burn to give the body of the bird a little bit more dimensionality, but also to brighten up the pupil. So you can see I'm brushing in a little bit of a reflection and then doing a subtract to make sure that eye stands out. And this is one of the best ways to bring more life to any of your wildlife shots. For the photo of the Corvette, I restarted it from scratch using one of my presets to really make sure the colors and everything were sitting where I needed them to. But this light depth tool has to be one of my favorites. It's basically a one click and it auto masks and analyzes the depth for you. Now, one of the things you can do is inside any of the tools within Luminar, you can go into the mask tab and basically brush in or out certain portions of that tool. So in my case, I felt like the one side of the car was a little bit too bright. So by brushing that portion of the car away, it made it feel a little bit more natural to this scene. So here's the raw, here is the one second edit and the final edit. For most of my photos, I didn't end up spending a full hour. I think on average, it was 15, 20 minutes at most. But for this photo of Moraine Lake, I did take a little bit longer because I tried the skin retouching tool, which automatically found that I have like a little scar on the side of my nose. But the sky tool is the one that I probably spent forever trying to decide what looked good because unfortunately I, did capture this photo on a day when it was completely overcast. And so I was trying to find something that felt good and natural to the scene. Now the twilight enhancer tool, which you'll see me use here, is very tempting to use because it almost just like recolorizes and relights the scene to make it look like it was shot at a completely different time of day. But in the end, I felt like it was maybe a little bit too much and just stuck with using the atmosphere tool, which has to be one of my favorite because there are a bunch of different options for fog, for haze, for mist. With a lot of these edits, you'll see that I go crazy and then I dial it back to give you an idea of what's possible. There is also a mood tool which allows you to apply LUTs. So if you have any of my LUTs, you can actually load them into the software and then set the intensity if you're looking to effectively just like color grade your photo. This photo of New York City was one that I probably spent about 20 minutes doing. The uh, atmosphere tool again was one that I experimented with. And in this case, I found that the haze setting looked really good just to add a little bit of depth and separation between the foreground and the subject. It is also important to keep track of the order that you apply your tools in. So ideally you wanna make all of your like highlight and shadow adjustments first, and then go in to do something like the sky replace, which I'm adding just a little bit at the top here because the sky, not that it's boring, it is very colorful, but adding just a little bit can be very tasteful. But then you'll see here that I'm adding a film grain effect. Now, this is something that you'd wanna add last because it kind of covers everything all together. But in my case, I found that it was a little bit too strong. And so this is where I went into the masking and actually applied a luminance mask, which means it's only gonna look at all of the white and the highlight tone. So it's kind of like this added bonus effect of having a little bit of grain in a tasteful way without destroying all of the detail in all of your shadows. Luminar has so many different tools that spending one hour on a single photo edit isn't unrealistic, but it's also not required. Most of the time you can get 90% of the way there with just a single click. And it is nice knowing that with a one-time purchase, there's no sneaky credit system or reoccurring monthly fees. You have everything that you need to do your basic edits. And then as you decide to level up your skills and do more complex edits, all the tools, everything you need is right there. So if you're curious to find out more or try Luminar Neo for yourself, everything you need to know is linked right at the top of the description. And until the next one, 
grab your camera, get out, and go shoot photos. I don't know what's going on here. This is like the love preset. It just made all, it just replaced the cloud. This is crazy. Uh, that was like one click.